coming up next with your friendship and sobriety podcast. But first I had to hop on and tell you about this free sobriety mindset masterclass I'm doing tonight. I hope to see you there. I'm going to be walking you through the mindset secrets that helped me change my entire life. You're going to get mindset tricks so that you can finally stop letting the alcohol control you and start getting your health back on track. We're going to break down old beliefs and replace them with new ones. And you're going to be able to imagine your life free from the chains of alcohol once and for all. We'll be doing visualization. I'm going to give you a free mindset workbook that's going to come right with the link when you register. And the big question I get often is, can you really be happy and fun without booze? Well, you can, but you need to have the right mindset first. And I'm going to teach you all about that tonight in this mindset masterclass. So August 18th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard. It's free and you can get it at vibewithstephanie.com slash masterclass. It's going to be taking place on Zoom. So just register right here. I will send you the link. I will send you your free mindset workbook and I will see you then. I am so, so excited. Let me know what you think after we finish. And here's your podcast. Just the other day, I was having a conversation inside of my Sober Vibes group and I was asking the women what one thing kept them from getting sober for so long. Most of us have been thinking about it or wanting to get sober forever and just haven't. And one of the most common answers was losing their friends and not being able to socialize. So I wanted to touch on those and give you a few of my stories here because a lot of people don't know this and maybe that'll help explain a few things, but also to let you know that I am in the same boat. I am definitely at a place where it's time for me to make new friends. Even if you're not getting sober after this whole COVID thing and being in isolation for so long, add on the fact that we're older now, our interests are changing we're changing. Some of us are getting sober and some of us are just yearning for connection. I can talk all day about connection because I am on social media. I make friends online. I have friends that teach me things, friends that help me with things, but they're all online. And it's time to kind of expand and open up a little bit and let some new people in. So we'll talk about that because it's such a common thing that we're afraid that we are either A, not going to be fun anymore once we quit drinking or B, our friends are going to stop inviting us. So I'm going to be super truthful about both of those things. When you quit drinking, you need to isolate from your friends, maybe about 30 days because you just need to use that time to work on yourself. So for the first 30 days, I was hunkered down. I was too busy taking these crazy walks and just trying to keep my head afloat to even think about entertaining a friend. So during your first 30 days, you're going to want to stay busy and just, you know, connect if you need to via text or whatever. I just had my head down and just needed to get through getting sober. And then I was able to kind of emerge and I feel like I came out kind of a butterfly. I came out a new person. I had no brain fog. I was proud of the mommy that I had become. My self-esteem was better because I hadn't been breaking all these promises to myself. I wasn't hungover, a little skinnier, a little bit better and different. So keep that in mind too, because it's going to change the dynamic of your friendships. The fact that you're getting sober is already going to change it. And I don't want you to be afraid of that because you have to do what's right for you to get yourself in a better place for your life. We have one life. This is it. You got to do what you got to do and then let the chips kind of fall as they may. And when you come out and you emerge, you can then reevaluate and see what's going on. So the relationship between the friends that I did have, most of them were built around alcohol. When I first moved to this town, I was a new mommy and was looking for mom friends, but it was important to me that they drank. I needed, you know, my mommy group, everybody to kind of drink, but also be the best moms possible. So I made sure that I found that and I did. So then what do I expect when I get sober? They're still drinking. They're still drinking heavy. I had to distance myself from that. And the ones that wanted to stick around did. And the ones that didn't, didn't. So do I still go to awesome things? I do, but I'll be usually the first one to leave. I've always got mocktails with me. 
I used to, I don't as much anymore have to lean on that. But in the beginning, after I did emerge and wanted to start being social again, I had to bring my own mocktails everywhere. I brought a cooler with me everywhere because I didn't want to be tempted and lose all the time that I had put in. So I always made sure that I brought mocktails. But let me back up a little bit. In my case, a lot of important women in my life are gone. My mother passed away from cirrhosis. My grandmother died last year, heart failure and dementia, alcohol related. And my two best friends passed away just a couple of years apart from each other. And they were both women. So I lost a lot of important women. And just this week, my main mama girlfriend moved to North Carolina for her husband's job. Our kids are besties. She's shown me how to relax into mommyhood. She's been a true friend. She's shown me how to kind of be a mom and shown me the ropes. She's known my little boy since he was two. So now she's gone. And it feels like a clean slate. Maybe now is when I'm actually emerging. I'm coming up on my one year sober. Maybe now is when I'm able to start making friends and build more of a friendship. I didn't know who I was before. When you're getting sober, your personality is changing. Your your character, who you based your whole life on is changing. So maybe it's a good thing that you are feeling a little lonely and you're having to dig deep and you're having to think about who you are and what you want and what you like and finding new hobbies because you're not the same person as you were when you were a drinker. So the slate is now clean. School's starting back. And it's just time to kind of open our hearts and our minds and start the process of making new, real, in-person, living, breathing friends. Imagine, oh, I'm a little nervous about it, but I can see that I've been thinking about it a lot more. And I am even making mental notes of what I'm going to be looking for in a friend. I'm actually looking for two friends. So this is going to sound like a classifieds ad, but it kind of is in a way. You want to put it out into the universe what you're looking for because we get to reinvent ourselves being sober and that is one of the most exciting things like looking back on my life it seems like i've reinvented myself a few times i was a realtor i was a hairdresser i owned a boat detailing company i was a yacht stewardess i was a cook on yachts what else all kinds of stuff and so now i'm sober and i get to reinvent myself right now. So I get to choose who my new friends are going to be and open back up because I think after when my two best friends died and they had been around for a lifetime, I think I just said, you know what, I'm just going to throw myself into work. Basically, once my second friend passed away, I was pregnant with my little boy. We moved. I was like, I'm just going to start a new life. I reinvented myself as a mom, as somebody who worked from home and just kind of built this bubble around myself. Thinking about this podcast this morning as I was making some notes, I felt a little bit of shame and guilt because walking into my son's school for the last two years, my head was down and in my phone, walking in and walking out. And do you know how many opportunities to meet people and make more lifelong friends that I missed by having my face in my phone the whole time? And I know it's just a protection mechanism for me. I, I didn't want, I wasn't. I didn't want to meet anybody new. I wasn't ready, but I am now. So I'm super excited for the possibilities. So keep that in mind when you're feeling lonely and when it feels like you're all alone out there in sobriety, that you'll find new friends, but maybe right now you're meant to kind of sit with yourself and feel these feelings and kind of go through it. And it's crazy. The feelings still come up and all these memories come up and I'm constantly working on myself and through trauma to be a better person. So I want to be able to be a good friend to someone else too, because I, I don't know that I have been that great of a friend to to my friends. So I'm excited to get to start new and be who I want to be for them and for myself. So back to the worry about how you're going to be socially. I'll just tell you now <laughs> that it is awkward at first. It is awkward. The first couple of times that I did finally emerge and go out and do something social, I'm not sure I said a word. I was afraid of my own shadow. I was afraid 
of who I was, who I was becoming. If I would fail, I was afraid I wouldn't be funny. I, I didn't know who I was even presenting to the world. So it is awkward at first. Definitely, if I can offer any tips, it's going to be have something in your hand at all times. Don't be afraid to eat. You can totally eat now. You're saving so many calories by not drinking, but always keep something to drink in your hands. And the sparklier, the better, in my opinion, or the colder, the better, for sure. I wasn't even able to go to restaurants with my husband in early sobriety, probably 30, 45, 60 days, like a while. When I say hunker down and get sober, I mean it because I just knew, I mean, part of our routine is when we go out to eat, we'll get bottles of wine, I'll get martinis, we'll have sake if it's sushi. So I just knew that if I went to a restaurant and sat down, I would want to drink. That's what we do. And so I just had to stay out of restaurants for a while. And that may seem like punishment to you, but honestly, it's nothing but doing good for yourself. And you are going to thank yourself for that later because now I can go to restaurants. I can see all the sake and the wine being passed around and it doesn't even affect me at all. Hallelujah. But it takes a minute. It's going to take some time. And I have also found that your friends may not even know how to invite you or not invite you, they might just do nothing because they don't know what to do. They know that you're not drinking, so they're not gonna invite you out, so then you're gonna feel left out. And that can be a little bit of a sticky situation too. But once you get your sober legs and you figure out who you are, what you want, then you'll be able to communicate that to them and say, look, I do wanna be invited. I may not come, but at least invite me and let them know that that's how you feel because you'll likely not want to go. Or maybe when they do invite you, you go and you're like, oh, this is weird. And you'd rather just be alone, <laughs> which in turn, sending you back to being a hermit, which I'm not trying to do. We do need to make friends, but we're just going to have to find different ways to do it. And it's going to be outside of our normal patterns that we've put ourselves in. I don't gossip. I can't stand small talk, so I'm not the warmest at first glance. I'm probably not wide open, but I'm going to get better. And I am fiercely loyal when I do find a friend. So I'm super excited. I think I can see the light at the end of the tunnel and I'm excited for you as well. So here's some ideas that I was thinking about earlier that we can use to make some new friends. I read somewhere that someone had some of the best friends that they've ever made by just complimenting someone on their perfume. How simple is that? So when you're walking by another mom or another woman or somebody who looks fun and pretty and whatever, compliment them. Earrings, outfit, you can even say, where did you get it? Which will kind of open it up a little more when you ask somebody a question and they respond, then it kind of opens them up. And then maybe see if the conversation flows. But I know that step number one for me is to put my phone down because I've used that as a shield for years now. I mean, years. When we moved here and my little boy was two, he's six now. That's how long I've been working from my phone and just head down and that's my shield. So I am not going to do that anymore. When I'm outside this house and I am not working, that phone needs to be put away and I need to be alert and open. So we can compliment people we can find a group, and this is something I need to do. I need to find some kind of group that I'm not leading. I've got groups where I'm leading and I'm coaching and I'm training and I'm talking and I'm the leader. I want to be the student. I want to go and learn something. So I don't know what that'll be yet. If you have ideas, you totally let me know. But I would like to find a group and just be a part of a group that doesn't have to do with sobriety, doesn't have to do with business, any of that. So also, asking moms to grab coffee. What do moms like better than coffee? I don't know. Not, nothing. Target maybe. So if I see a mom that looks awesome, I'm going to say, Hey, why don't we grab a coffee really quick? Or you want to grab a coffee tomorrow at nine? There's also volunteer opportunities. I really want to show my little boy about volunteering too. And it'll make us all feel better to start volunteering. So that's an idea, a great way to meet people gym or a yoga membership. I would love to get back into slow flow yoga, a book club. I have one of these within my sober group, my sober vibes group, which is actually really awesome. But what about an in-person book club? Maybe the library holds one or a cute little bookstore in your town may have book clubs that you can physically go and sit and be a part of that. And I think that's what we need more of is just more human interaction 
and less cell phones in our face all the time as a, as a shield. I hope that you're in a place that you're ready to emerge and start making friends. I hope that you feel worthy. I hope you don't feel like you're boring because you're not. When you start coming out of your comfort zone, you will realize that you have a lot of worth and a lot to give and that people want to know you and people want to meet you. And you're kind of doing them a disservice by not being out there and shining your light. Have a great day. Let's chat soon. Just a reminder to join me for the Mindset Masterclass tonight. Go to vibewithstephanie.com slash masterclass. You can either come and watch me fall on my face or come and cheer me on. No one knows what's going to happen tonight, but I'm excited. I'll see you there.